Hello and welcome to On the Table. I am Rachel and I'm here with Corey and Rebecca and this week we've got some fun topics to we discuss. Do. So Definitely. before we dive in, because I we have a really interesting topic, but before we do that, I have a, a question for you guys. Okay. That I'm curious about because I realized I actually don't know this about you and I know you guys pretty well, so I should know this. So I'm Ooh. gonna ask you anyway. Uh, you've piqued my interest now. I'm like, what could it <laughs> it's be? It's actually not an interesting oh. question. <laughs> I just don't know it, and I feel like I should. <laughs> okay. So what is your favorite all-time movie? Favorite all-time movie? It's like not even a thought for me. Really? It's very easy. Yeah, Sound of Music, by far. <gasps> really? Oh, I love it. I've watched yeah, that's a good choice. probably 50 times, like no exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a, it's a classic for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that's it. That's a good one. I really can't, like there's three, and I really can't. You can't choose that's between choose? those three. It's not and my they're, favorite anymore. They're wildly different okay. genres. Oh. See, that's kind of where I come from. I'm like, I have favorites in genres. Yeah. I can't pick one. No. Okay. I can't do it. Beauty okay. and the Beast Disney movie. Mm. The Which original. one? So good. The, the animated. The, the animated, animated one. Okay. The animated. Uh, Lord of the Rings series. Which, which, oh, series. Oh, so, <laughs> so Including really, the Hobbit? Really, okay, okay so the first one. Okay, fine. If I have to choose, I choose the first one, okay? <laughs> right. Okay, The Fellowship of the Ring. And the third one is Singing in the Rain. It's a really oh, good that's one. That's a good too. choice, I love too. Singing it's in the good. Rain. Like, that's I can a really watch good choice. it at any moment, yeah. at the, no, no matter what mood I'm in, Singing in the Rain. I can see. So, really, that's your favorite one. Probably, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's the what criteria is really whatever mood you're in, can yeah. you still watch this You can this still movie? watch it. If you're happy sound or music sad, is that you can movie watch for it. Me. If I'm having a really bad day, sound of music. If I'm having the best day of my life, sound of music. It's yeah. just always there. Yeah. yeah. It's the best movie. It's like a good old faithful. It is. Okay, yeah. so yeah, then I would probably what? have to settle on singing in the rain. I'm glad we helped you work through this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Now I know my tier <laughs> system. This is, I you need you guys for this. Yeah, what are you Okay, so I, I'm kind of like you. I have diff I have favorites based in, in genres, but then I also have what I get obsessed with for a little while. Mm. Okay, so that's right, fair. So right yeah, now, my favorite movie that I seem to keep accidentally putting on and realizing I'm watching this again is actually Zootopia. It's so oh, good. I think cute. Zootopia is really movie. adorable. It is but cute. it's not it's not my all time favorite, but right now it kind of is for a little while. So it's it's a good one. It's super cute. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. Especially cute. the cheetah. Is he a cheetah? He's the uh, one with the donuts. So yes, the donuts. Yeah, yeah, he's yes. the best character. He's so cute. I just adore him. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I think I like His the. the is it um, the mole? Because they're not mice. Right. The daughter. You're talking about the daughter. The daughter of the gangster. Yes. yes. <laughs> She's yes. so I think cute. That, of course, that's the one you like, actually. <laughs> now that you said that, I'm like, oh, it's yeah. not even a question in my mind. That's yeah. your favorite character. She's so sense. cute. Even her little voice <laughs> yes. is just perfect. It's so adorable. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Okay, nice. So for our actual topic of conversation, supposed Bible contradictions. Right. Because that seems to be a big thing for, for skeptics. There's a lot of people who, who don't believe the Bible and they're like, you know what, there's too many. My problem with the Bible is it doesn't make sense. There's contradiction. Yeah. And for the Christian, the Christian will look at it and go, there are no contradictions in the Bible. So somebody right. can't be right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, yes. there's a problem here. So what do you guys think? Well, I think that you could, you have to determine what you mean by a contradiction, yep. right? Like that's that's a good place to start. So a contradiction, like a classic contradiction, is if if one if one statement is true, the other statement cannot be true. Yes. Right. So if a Bible makes two statements that are diametrically opposed to each other, yes. yep. then that's a contradiction. There's something right. wrong yes. there. Yeah, the law of non and, contradiction. Yeah, and within context. Yes. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like that needs to be said every time on this is within <laughs> context because there can be certain verses that you have in the Bible that you're like, oh, look, it blatantly says this and then it blatantly says this. But when you read that in context, that's not actually what it's saying. Yeah. So right. So what really is important. it? So you're talking about less, you're talking about more like what does it actually mean? Exactly. So and what's you, the meaning yes. of this instead of just the words? Yes. Because okay. you can really twist anything to make it say anything. Absolutely. And depending on the perspective that you have, that's going to change a lot too. If I'm coming at this from a non-Bible believing standpoint, yep. I'm not going to look for things in context. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look right. for those like odd, odd things out, right? Whereas when you have that from a Christian perspective, you're going to actually take the entire text, take the history of the text, take who's saying you the should text, be. the yeah. whole yeah. thing, and you should be doing that yeah. with any document, yeah. whether yeah. it's the Bible or something else. And with any person. I mean, that's exactly. what we, we always nail the news on doing is taking people's words out of context, yeah. making them mm -hmm. say something that they didn't actually mean. The or words twisting right. it just enough. Twisting it. Yes. Yes. So that, like, we're talking Sound about giving, the, giving, when you're talking about contradictions in the Bible, you need to give the Bible a fair trial. In 
and you that do. you're you actually do. looking at what it's trying to communicate and not trying to do that, aha, gotcha, yes. which I find a lot of people try mm -hmm. to do if they're, you know, if they're against the Bible for whatever exactly. reason, the, philosophically. Right, and I think you can have two things, the Bible can say two things that differ mm -hmm. without it being a contradiction. Yes, and, and there can be circumstances in between that have happened that have changed the rules on that as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. and that, that's an important point, and I think we'll mm -hmm. end up coming to that too. Yeah, and I think also we have to remember that the Bible also quotes people, so that's an important yes. thing, that the Bible's not necessarily endorsing everyone that it quotes. Yes. I can quote someone and disagree with them, yeah. yes. so there's that too. Mm -hmm. Look for quotes. <laughs> Make sure that it's actually... Who's saying what? Yes. Okay, yeah. so for our first contradiction that we'll look at, because we have four, uh, human sacrifice. Okay. So the I took easiest of topics. The easiest yeah. of topics. <laughs> Let's start with a hard one. It's fun. Um, so I took all of the contradictions that I found for today from an article on um, atheists.org by mm -hmm. Frank Zindler. And so for human sacrifice, he states, Leviticus 18.1, and you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. But in Judges... Uh, the tale of Jephthah, who led the Israelites against the Ammonites, is being told, being fearful of defeat, this good religious man sought to guarantee victory by getting God firmly on his side. So he prayed to God, if you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, and then he quotes scripture, then it will be what, that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. Right. Um, and he seems to think, uh, this is Zindler, the terms were acceptable to God. Remember, he's supposed to be omniscient and know the future, so he gave victory to Jephthah, and the first whatsoever that greeted him upon his glorious return was his daughter, as God surely knew would happen if God is God. True to his vow, the general made a human sacrifice of his only child to God. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's one that I think that you, that you hear kind of over and over and over again. It's one of the big contradictions yes. that all atheists or people who aren't supportive of the Bible, they're like, but there's this in the Bible, which yeah. it is a really big hurdle if you don't understand the context of it to understand this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to think that, you know, you, that as Christians that we serve a God who would accept child sacrifice. Yeah. Like, if you really believe that, I don't blame you for not yeah. believing yeah. in Christianity, yeah. right? Which is right. why it's important that we clear it up. Well, I think the assumptions made because Jephthah made the vow and won the battle. Yes. Mm -hmm. But... Either way, if the battle's won or lost, does that mean that God is okay with child sacrifice? Like, if he's saying no, but then it seems to accept it, what do we do with that? Does, like, how... You know, it's pretty interesting that the Bible actually says nothing about God accepting it. In, in, when you actually read Judges right. 11, there's, there's nothing that mm -hmm. says, and God said, yeah, great idea. That where he's like, you know, you're, he's not blessed for doing <laughs> right. this no. by any means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it's just a misconception of the situation kind well, of thing. Well, it happened. Jephthah, right. Jephthah uh, sacrificed his daughter. There are Christians who would say, well, the Bible doesn't actually say that he could have, you know, dedicated her to the, yeah. the service of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a nice thought to do. Uh, yeah. But if you're going with the historical context, he killed her. He mm -hmm. definitely it, killed her. Yeah, and it does say that he, you know, that he he did as he had vowed. Yes. And yeah. what he vowed was that he was going to sacrifice her. So yeah. I think from the biblical context of this, it's safe to say that. It's pretty it's safe, really to safe, safe to say that. It seems like he did. Uh, the, the problem that I have with this contradiction is that <sighs> you have to take in context, like, why, why is the history of of Jephthah in there. The people who are writing the book of Judges, it's believed to be Samuel. Samuel was a priest, right. a prophet, and a judge. He knew about the law of God. So he, mm -hmm. he, he knew that this had the potential to trip people up. That people would be yep. like, but wait, does God endorse child sacrifice? He knew that God didn't endorse yeah. child sacrifice. Um, and, and he wrote the book of Judges. But the entire point of the book of Judges is chaos, <laughs> is that this, this time yeah. in Israel's history was chaos, and over and over and over again as you read through Judges, the, the line is, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. No one listened to God, exactly. no one was following the law. Yeah. And you know when you look at pretty much, uh, well, most, I'm gonna say most of the Judges in the book of Judges, they aren't morally upstanding, God-fearing people. God was, right. God was 
choosing warriors to help deliver Israel, but he wasn't being like, look, this is a hero, a role model that you should look up to. That's Christians that yeah. have done that. Yeah, we see we all with all the judges in Sunday school, you learn about all the good things that they do. And yes. there's kind of that, mm -hmm. we look at the heroism yes. a little bit. So the entire point of the book of Judges is this is chaos. This is what happens when people don't follow God. Right. So taking a man who, yes, he delivered Israel. He was a warrior. The Bible says he was a warrior. Saying that God endorses Jephthah's behavior here is going far beyond the text because the Bible says nothing about this being acceptable to God. Right. Yeah, he won the battle, but he shouldn't have sacrificed the daughter. And, and that would have been apparent to the Jews who this was written for. Right. Yeah, Book of Judges. And, and one of the things, um, like just to present this contradiction in its fullness, I guess, that I've heard with that is I know I've heard a lot of um, atheists and people say, well, what about Abraham? He specifically right. asked to sacrifice his child. Yeah. yeah. So what about that case? It's nice to say here in context and that kind of thing. But with Abraham, God specifically tells him to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you've read it, you obviously know that's not how that story ends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't think that's the point of that story. But but even I've heard it said that, you know, well, with Abraham, why doesn't he contradict God on that? Why isn't he like, no, I know that you're against child sacrifice. So why... Mm -hmm. So why would you be asking me to do this? Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that was that was a point that I thought was interesting to to look. But again, if you're keeping that in context, Abraham did come from a culture where child sacrifice was acceptable. Yep. Yep. God was a new thing for him at this time. So for him, even if he if he had gone through or not, this would have been something that he would have been like, yeah, in my culture, this is acceptable. So this is right. one of the ways that in that specific text, God's specifically setting him apart from the other gods that are there because he's mm -hmm. like, stop, no. I just wanted to know you're faithful. Mm -hmm. And that's more the point of that text. Right. And it's so. all and it also would have been tremendously instructive for Abraham. It would have so it would have so. solidified in his mind, okay, God is not the same. Exactly. He's different. He stopped the yeah, sacrifice exactly. and told me that he would always provide mm -hmm. a sacrifice. So it switches the role because in the ancient world it was the human providing the sacrifice for the God, yep. always across the board. Mm -hmm. But in that case, God stops Abraham and then he provides a sacrifice exactly. and promises. Is I am the God of that provision. Mm -hmm. So right. it was a teaching moment. It wasn't about, it was actually the opposite of what we claim today. We claim exactly. God was requiring Isaac. No, God was actually trying to solidify in Abraham's mind, I am the provider. You can't actually give me anything. I mm -hmm. have given you Isaac. I will now give you a sacrifice. And, right. So and it's really what a cool, cool foreshadowing that is, cool. that is for the gospel too, for Christ, as we obviously right. know with Christ, yeah. which is yeah. neat. God literally so. providing the ultimate exactly. sacrifice. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So yeah. not a contradiction. No. It's not. No. Okay. And, and when you read, like, there's a lot of verses, I think, that have have text about, you know, whether you sacrifice something to Molech or all different kinds of gods as well. When you really read those, but then when you read the Levitical law, it's so clear. God yes. says time after time after time, don't sacrifice children. Don't do yeah. it. So. Okay. So mm -hmm. our second one is also another one of those topics, incest. It would seem, according to it's skeptics that sometimes it is acceptable to God. So the um, sources that I have here, so Deuteronomy 27, 22, cursed is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. And also Leviticus 20, 17, if a man takes his sister, his father's daughter or his mother's daughter and sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is a wicked thing and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He has uncovered his sister's naked, nakedness. He shall bear his guilt. But what was God's reaction to Abraham, who married his half-sister? In Genesis 20, 11 through 12, um, and 17, 16, um, I will bless her and, uh, and also give her a son by her. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And with that, on that side of the argument as well, the children of Adam and Eve... There would have been no yeah. other options for them yep. between nieces, cousins, siblings... That's, it's not something that's like explicitly said, but it's certainly it's implied. implied. It's implied. There's Definitely not really any other options yeah. there. So <laughs> that's one that I feel kind of goes along with that on, on yeah. that side of the argument. Yeah. Is the word, Abraham's kids and, no, and Noah, question. same deal. Yeah. Like they had they had husbands and wives, but what about those kids? Yeah. Right? Same deal. There's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. And you see a lot of that in early Bible. You totally do. A and, lot. And I, but that's the key. It's the, it's the early part of it. Yes. So like when we're reading from Leviticus, when we're reading from Deuteronomy, that's the Mosaic law because it was given to Moses and the, it was given to the Israelites and the Israelites were all descendants of Abraham. So Abraham right. was the first one. He was brought out of a secular society 
and he was already married at that point. He yep, was yes. already married to Sarai at That's that point, key. Abram and Sarai. Yep. So God called him out of his culture and then changed his culture. But he chose uh, to work with Abram, and Abram was already married to Sarai. So. Yeah. What's he supposed to do at that point? Exactly. He's taking people out. And then it was, then he implemented all of those rules about child yeah. sacrifice and, and incest right. and all of these things. So you can't really do the whole Abraham, Sarah thing, <laughs> I don't think. Work. And God's not, just because he, he would have, if, it, if it's condemned at that point, if it was a mistake at that point, just because he's done that, that's not, it just shows God's mercy in that, that that's not, just because you make one sin in your life or right. one wrong move, yeah. God's no longer gonna bless that marriage or whatever it is, yeah. right? right? So, and I, I think that's kind of neat and talks about God's yeah. character even more to Abraham coming out of the culture he did. Yep. It shows mm -hmm. so much more that he's like, oh, even though this is, you know, not right. Not ideal. Yeah. Not ideal. Yeah. 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 So something that he goes okay, with. so then let's go right back because if incest is really wrong, then why didn't God create like two Adam and Eves, exactly. like two two yes. couples, or for every that, single kid? Yeah, yeah. someone new. Yeah, okay. could have. So what's what's with that? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, well, I think I was talking to my husband a little bit about this, and he had some actually pretty interesting insights to this. He was talking about how um, the gene pool would have actually been so different with. Uh, Adam and Eve. Absolutely. And I think mm. that that's one of the things that when you're talking about incest now, everyone's like, well, you shouldn't do it for Ew. obvious reasons. <laughs> but also there is a lot of issue with kids and that kind of thing from there. But if you look at Adam and Eve, like their genes would have been so different from ours because all of our genes come from them. So theirs Those would have been so much and more. and mistakes wouldn't have been Yeah, there. it would have been so much more diverse. Yeah. And it's not in the law at that point. And I think it's because of that, because their genes, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have messed up the kids. It wouldn't have done any of that yeah. because it's so diverse at that point. Yeah, it's there's not no until, mutations. Yeah, and yeah. it's not until Leviticus when it's yeah. that much. And you see it through the Bible. Like, look at how long Adam lives and Methuselah lives and mm -hmm. Noah lives. Yeah. And then when you get to Abraham, he's what, 175 years, I think mm -hmm. it is? Mm -hmm. How much more yeah. even then it's going down and down and down and down and down. When you get to the point of Leviticus, now it's at the point where you're like, okay. It's probably not a good probably idea because you can run into issues. Exactly. Yeah. And, so, and so many of the Levitical laws are for health reasons mm -hmm. and are for scientific reasons that now, like we're like, how did they know that? Oh, well, God put that in his law right. for this. It's right. not like they would have known necessarily everything about genes and all kinds of things. Because Why today, you should be doing it? we have that. We do have close we marriages in some parts yes. of the world. People do still marry cousins um, and some mm -hmm. tribes will, like they're, they're smaller gene pools and they are, like exactly. there is an intermarrying and that does affect genetics. Yeah, it does. But on that so, does. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting question about why couldn't God have created two Adams and, and two Eves? Eves. Yeah. Um, I wonder then how that would have affected the fall, though. Right. Okay. Because, right. because yeah. you, we have we come to the New Testament, we talk about the first Adam and the last Adam being Christ. Would that then have been and a little bit of a hang up if there was a second yeah. Adam? That to give wasn't this Christ? argument all fairness, <laughs> they didn't have kids before the fall. Right. So mm. good. Not once. Once that fall happened, and genes would have been mutating from there in could a, in a sinful way. Have made could more. God then have? And yes, like the answer is yes. He could have. It's more. Why did he choose not to? There's purpose to everything that he does. Exactly. Yeah. So. Exactly. Theologically, I think it's interesting that that we all are from the same family because hypothetically, awesome. if yeah. we if we said that there were two separate people, two separate couples, that we did, could we not then? Like by, go into like this weird biological race war, yeah. Where absolutely. it's like, we, okay, we have a bunch of different races, but genetically, I'm more this side, and you're more like yeah. that's so such human nature, right? It is. To yeah. divide, it is. divide, divide. There's racism now, and we're mm -hmm. all related. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think maybe theologically, we handle it. I think yeah, I think maybe theologically, there's something to that where God's like, you are all descendants of Adam and Eve. Exactly. You're all one family, yep. and you're that's all really made point. in my image, yep. kind of thing. It, it's yeah. less complicated. Yeah. And God clearly doesn't see the need for more genes or more anything like that, different races yeah. between them, nothing like that. Yeah. He's, he's made it, and he said when he made Adam and Eve, it is good. Mm -hmm. And yep. there wasn't anything beyond that. He mm -hmm. didn't need more than that. Mm -hmm. And he like he knows that they're going to have children and so on and so yeah. forth, and, and he knows what's going to happen with that, but clearly it was good. Yeah, he tells yeah. them to. It was okay. He does. And multiply. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Yeah, it is. It's a really good point. It's fun to think about. Mm -hmm. Hypotheticals. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Okay, so here's a different one. Um, what about trusting God? What about trusting God? Okay, so according to the article, mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs 12.2 says, A good man obtains favor from the Lord, 
but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. Right. Now consider the case of Job. After oh, commissioning Satan to, to ruin Job financially and to slaughter his shepherds and children to win a petty bet with Satan, God asked Satan, um, have you considered my servant Job, yeah. that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and he still holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without a cause. And that's Job 2, verse 3. So what about that? Is there a contradiction here? Does God throw Job under the bus? <laughs> That's essentially he what totally we're asking. He totally does. I think he throws Job under the bus. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. But then is there is there a contradiction there? Right. But did Job ever really lose favor from God? I mean, like temporarily, he physically, lost material yes. things. Physically, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But God, yes. but. The, and, okay, yes, and that's and I think that's it depends on how you read it, and I think that's the problem with this this apparent contradiction is that the way you read Proverbs twelve two, I think they're taking something out of it that wasn't meant to be there in the first place. Yeah, um, because you have to consider that there isn't really anywhere in Scripture where God promises long life, health, safety. Yeah, as kind of a package. If you serve me, in every you will have no worries. Yeah, and, yeah. and in fact, like in John, um, it's John 21, verse 22. Jesus is talking to um, Peter, I believe, and he says, if it's my will that he remain until I come, he's talking about John in this instance, mm -hmm. what's that to you? You follow me. Mm -hmm. And so basically what he's saying, he's like, whatever I do, your faith needs to be good enough yeah. and, mm -hmm. and practical enough that you follow me regardless of what happens in your life. Yeah. And I think he specifically says it to them because look at the things that happened to the disciples after Jesus dies, like they yeah. go yeah. through a lot yeah. historically. So, and I think, I think it's an interesting thing to note that even in this passage here, I think that's one of the reasons we have Job in the Bible. It has done countless measures for, for giving people the faith to keep going even when times are so tough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because look at Job, he was an upright, blameless man. I don't think the point of this text is to be like, look how bad God is. He's thrown him under the bus and he's yeah. done all mm -hmm. these things to him. It's more to see, look at Job's reaction to that yeah. mm -hmm. That's, and how amazing that is. Well, and even at the end of the book, go read to the yes. end of the book because what does God portion. do? He, he redeems Job mm -hmm. yes, and everything is returned to him. He mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. he's given children and his wealth is returned yes. in double portion. And, it, yeah. and the, I think you have to keep in mind the whole, again, context of the entire mm -hmm. story. It's not, there's no promise that we're going to have this safe, safe life. And I think exactly. a lot of skeptics look at, at the Bible and God and go, you know, you're, you're promising, you talk about how much God loves you, mm -hmm. but then look at all these bad things that happen yeah. and, right. and they're not seeing that that doesn't, that's not a contradiction. Yeah. And, right. I, and I, you know, I think what a lot of people fail to recognize, skeptics and Christians alike, because there's, yeah. there's a lot of Christians who don't recognize this too, is that God's favor is not just for this world. Sometimes you do get, you do yeah. see mm -hmm. people with having, having physical favor here on this earth, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just about that. It's spiritual favor and right. it's favor for the next life. God has come to give us eternal life. Yeah. So there's something else beyond this and that is the Christian focus. Yeah. Right. And we don't store up our treasures here. That's yeah, that's right. It's the, the point, next. Is that we don't do that. It's yeah. the next life. Mm -hmm. So that's really important to recognize about this. But I just like just just um, you know, as someone who loves the Bible and someone who studies history, I just have to like nitpick again on on the the whole context issue yep. where a proverb is not one hundred percent true all the time. And the, I know a lot of Christians will be like, wait, what? But it's in the Bible. <laughs> They're all clutching their first thing. Like, wait, you don't think the Bible's true? Okay. 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 Everyone's going to yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> Keep watching. What, what <laughs> Hold I mean, on. What I mean by that is that these are, these are wise sayings. They're godly sayings that mm -hmm. are applicable to a broad circumstance of life, but they're not like rules. Yes. There are right. so exceptions yes. to, like yeah. circumstances change. And so generally, does a good person obtain favor from the Lord? Absolutely. And spiritually, for sure. And in the eternal realm, for sure. Absolutely. Definitely. But there are those things like Job. So, um, so yeah. yeah, you know, you can't, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can't, you have point. to be really careful with the Proverbs because it is poetry and it, they yeah. are sayings of the wise. That's what a proverb is. So right. is a saying going to be true and applicable to every single circumstance? Right. It's and, true, but yeah. you may be applying it to the wrong circumstance. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the problems that I was finding when I was going through, because th this was a, out of a list of a, a lot more. And I found other articles with tons and tons of lists of all these right. supposed contradictions. And the one thing that there, it seems like they just take phrases 
and don't yeah. seem to care who's speaking, who they're speaking to, exactly. why or when. Like there's no context for for what's going on and mm -hmm. then going, look, it doesn't make sense. But yes. yeah. it does if you look yeah. at it. Do it's just research. maybe it doesn't yeah. it's not what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe you And it might be a harder truth than yeah. what you're ready for, but I think people have this weird idea that God because he is all powerful, he should do whatever we want because we're not. <laughs> yeah. He's not a vending machine. Yeah. I'm sorry guys, he's not. And, and, and but if so, he did genie, what every single so one of us better. wanted, yes. that doesn't even make any sense. It we doesn't. have to have a billion, however many people are, that are on this planet, each one of us would have to have our own universe. Yes. This, so that God could do exactly what each individual wanted. That's true. At any given point. Like it just doesn't work. It would, yeah, it, it breaks down God pretty is quickly. an individual. It does break down. <laughs> okay. So the last one right, okay. is seeing God. Okay. This one I've got a lot more verses for. So I will just give you kind of the Cliff Notes version. Please do. Um, okay, so starting with no, you can't see God verses. Yeah. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 15 through 17. Uh, he who is blessed and only sovereign, King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. And there's a few others like it. So we've got 1 Timothy 1.17, 1 John 4.12, Exodus 33.20, Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 4.12. They all kind of say something similar in that, in that realm. Like it can't be done. It cannot be done. <clears throat> but then they have the yes, you can see God verses. So we have Matthew 5.8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. They shall. Uh, and then Genesis 32.30. Um, and this is when uh, Jacob... Um, has uh, wrestled with God mm -hmm. and yes. he uh, names the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And then also Job 19, 26 and 27. And to be fair, there were more, but I yeah. only wrote down a couple because after a while there's just, there's a lot of verses to go through. So right. let's just go through a couple of them and we don't have to yep. read through all of them. But what I think for me, this one was kind of like, okay, yeah. <laughs> But no. You're convinced now. <laughs> I'm totally convinced. Throwing it There's out. a contradiction in there <laughs> now. We're done. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. So if we can't see God or we can see God, what do you think? Do you like, are think, these things talking, are these verses talking about the same thing? Does the word see apply in the same way in all of these verses? Is there a context? What's the context of this? Yeah. There's always a context issue. I mean, um, when when there's verses that you can't see God, I mean, a, a perfect example um, would be Moses when he asks mm -hmm. to see God, the and Exodus God's like thirty three verses. Yes, yeah. and 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 God's like, well, if I showed you my whole glory, you can't see my whole glory. Like yeah, you right. die. So he hides him in the cleft of a rock, and and Moses gets to see like part of him, but he not doesn't all see of him. His glory, which I think is kind of key to see that too. Like it yeah. talks about that too. Yeah. And those verses are relational because like. The, the verse 11 and verse 20 seem to contradict each other. Right. But really, read the entire chapter of <laughs> Exodus 33, and you're like, oh. And like, yeah. you wouldn't even put it in there as Bible contradictions once you read that. Because yeah. yeah. God first is like, you can't see me and live. And then he's like, I'll hide my glory, and you yeah. will only see a piece of this. Yeah. So, I'll give you enough that you exactly. can handle at this moment. Exactly. Yeah. As much as your yeah. human self can handle. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty cool if you think about it's it. Awesome. Because like, we just, that's not an option for us today. No. No. No, no, not in the not. same way. Not, not in the yeah. same way. Yeah, no. because it's it, because it's now. Like, and, and we forget that before the fall, Adam and Eve saw God all the time. All the time. Because yeah. he came for walks in the garden yes. in the cool of the day. Like, what? Yeah. Like, they saw so cool. him. Lucky ducks. And and so it was, <laughs> was, 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 the ducks probably saw him too, actually. Yeah, they probably did. That's actually very applicable. Yeah. <laughs> what a saying. <laughs> No, like, so there was a time and there will be a time again, which explains things like Matthew 5, uh, where they will see God. They will see God, just not right now, right. not in his full glory. So, exactly. I mean, when you're talking about seeing God, well, what can you see? Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right. Yes. One of his claims of divinity. Well, really? Kate, okay, not in every sense of the word. <laughs> he didn't, he, again. like, but... But in one sense, you have seen God because right. you've yes. seen his teachings and his words and one and version character. of him yes. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
I feel like it's so. almost an idiom that's kind of used t today. Like today we'll use certain language, like like cat's got your tongue or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't literally mean that the cat has gotten your tongue. And I feel like that's similar to, to the language that would have been going on, especially in Jesus' time, yeah. is this would have been something that would have said, like you will go see God as in you're going to die, go to heaven and see God. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's something that's widely understood in the Bible. And you can see from the way people respond to those verses as well. Yeah. They know he's talking about death in yeah. those. Yeah. They, they know that he's, they're not like, oh, <laughs> God's literally going to come down and do mm -hmm. those things. Right? right. So they kind of already knew that. And it's, it's something I think sometimes we take for granted yeah. is that if yeah. you literally are translating that to they're literally going to see God once that happens, it, it's, that's not the way it's supposed to go. Yeah. So. Well, and I think maybe another thing to consider too is when it comes to not being able to see God, God's spirit, like we have the Holy Spirit, but God the Father's spirit as well. Like Jesus is mm -hmm. the physical manifestation on mm -hmm. earth, mm -hmm. but seeing spirits a little bit different. So I wonder. Yeah, like the prophets try to describe it. Yeah. Like they have visions of it. Like when you see John in Revelation, yes. Ezekiel, yeah. Isaiah, when he sees yeah. like the throne room of God and they try to describe it. But it just, when you read it, you're like, what? I <laughs> it's okay. a really weird visual. <laughs> it's going to be one of those really cool things that makes sense once we're like yeah. on the other side of oh. Earth. So we're like, oh, that's duh. That's what it was. I yes. get it. Seraphim, whoa. <laughs> I get it now. So that's how big everything was. Yeah. And the arc and, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Keeping tenses in there is exactly. really important. And, it is. Yeah. I think what's really funny sometimes, I, I find it. I find it amusing is that a lot of times skeptics are like, Christians are so annoying. The Bible is so annoying. But then there being that person who's like, yep. cat's got your tongue. They're like, where is it? Where's the cat? Yeah, I don't seriously. see a cat. Stop. You're a liar. There's yes. no yes. cat. And you're like, okay, you're that person at that point. Yeah. Yes. Just yes. take a step back and mm -hmm. kind of. And again, I think it does depend on the eyes that you're, you're looking for. If I'm looking, reading through any book and I'm looking for a contradiction or something to tear it apart or anything like that. Yeah probably going to find something because, yeah. you know, people are human. The Bible's written by humans yeah, totally. and yes, it's inspired, but it's still written by humans. And guys. there are difficult things in there. There are really difficult oh, things yeah. like, like in this and human sacrifices and all the things we've just talked about. But, but I think that when you're reading it with, I think that's one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit's so key in, in what we do right. and, and why when we pray for people mm -hmm. and that kind of thing who are reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit helps you understand it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah. so important to keep well, in mind too. And there too. are rules for interpreting scripture. Like you totally. can't just read whatever you want into it. There are, yeah. there are methods and for reading And any historical document, not yeah. just the Bible, not just but the any Bible. historical document mm -hmm. has that. I think it's interesting that when it comes to these types of contradictions, because um, as I was reading them through I was, I, I didn't really have trouble with anything they were saying. I'm like, yeah, but that makes sense to me. I don't mm -hmm. see the contradiction. Mm -hmm. I see the differences. Mm -hmm. And I think that when it comes to people who kind of superficially read the Bible versus an, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, someone who studies it. To understand yes. it. Understanding yeah. it is, is, is different, but the, the contradictions are, are weightier for those who just kind of mm -hmm. superficially right. read. They're like, right. oh my goodness, it's, it's, a, it's obvious. How do you not see it? But right. if you actually study the word of God, for what it is, it's not, it's not quite so challenging. Like, mm -hmm. cause it starts mm -hmm. to make sense. You're reading the, the, all of it. From You're paying attention to what it's actually trying to say. Yeah. And yeah. I think it speaks to the Testament of how long the Bible's been around. Like if there was a contradiction that's so blatant <laughs> that's that we're point. like, that how on earth are you believing this? This has been around for a long time, guys. Like yeah. this isn't a brand new revelation we just got last week and we've yeah. just yeah. written it down. Like this has gone through a lot and it's gone through persecution. People die for this book. Hosti yeah, and yeah. hostile. Today areas. and in history and yeah. yeah. So it's gone through a lot. So if there is those contradictions in there, don't get me wrong. If you, if you find a contradiction, I, I encourage you to study that and make sure that you yeah. know both sides totally. of that. A, if you're a Christian, so you can defend that, and B, if you're not a Christian, so you can figure out what the truth actually is. Yeah. yeah. But is it actually a contradiction? Exactly. Yeah. But well, I think we have to recognize that just because we find something that doesn't make in Scripture doesn't mean that somebody else hasn't looked at the same thing and gone, oh, wait, that yes. makes sense. You just exactly. kind of have to do a little bit more yeah. digging, and it's really important, especially as Christians. I realize for skeptics, it's a little bit, it. this might be a tall order, but you have to be really careful not to sit in judgment over God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over things you, you may either disagree with or you find to be contradictory or anything that's difficult mm -hmm. to process. You mm -hmm. can't sit in judgment over the one who's created you because he knows more than you. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of have to go into this. And he knows this, the full picture. He's got it all. We don't. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. So, yeah. good. I think so.
<laughs> and that's all I have. That's all as far as, well, that's as many Bible contradictions that as I wanted to deal with today. But I, think, to with today. but I think that provides a good pattern. It's just like yeah, really it paying attention to, mm -hmm. it's just what you would do in conversation with someone if you're a generally nice human being is trying to pay attention to what they're actually yeah. saying instead of trying to gotcha, 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 yeah. gotcha. Because those are the people in the news that were like, oh. You're not looking to trip people up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So All right. provides a general platform, I hope. I think so. Yeah. Me Any too. final thoughts? I think that's it for me. All me right. too. Well, thank you for joining us this week on The Table, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining our discussion today on The Table. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to click subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest from Bible Discovery TV. On The Table is also on Facebook. Check out our page for our newest episodes and some behind-the-scenes content.